Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. Today we will understand how to analyze a transaction. We will understand the impact of those transactions on accounting equations and this will help us to understand how to make journal entries. Now we will understand this with the help of a question. Now as the question says, we have to analyze the effect of each transaction on accounting equation. So first of all, I'll write the accounting equation. As few of the books also writes this accounting equation as assets is equal to liabilities plus capital but we have considered the capital as a part of liabilities as it is generally covered in the balance sheet in liabilities section and this is an extended form of accounting equation so now we'll analyze the first transaction that is being given in our question. The first transaction says introduce rupees 8 lakhs as cash and rupees 50,000 by stock. Now we have to notice first that what are the accounts involved in the transaction? Here we can understand there are two accounts that has been involved that is cash and stock. But there is one more account which is capital which is involved in this transaction as cash and stock has been introduced to start a business. Now we'll make the equation cash which is an asset as I have marked in the bracket with the letter A. Stock is also an asset also called inventory and that is equal to capital which is part of the liability. Now the amount of cash was 8 lakhs and the stock 50,000. So the total capital becomes 8 lakhs 50,000 Now we'll come to the next transaction. Next transaction says purchase plant for rupees 3 lakhs by paying rupees 15,000 in cash and balance at a later date. Now we have to understand the number uh, means uh, the two accounts that has been involved in this transaction. The first one is plant itself. Second one is cash because 15,000 has been paid in cash. And the third thing is credit which the left amount which has not been paid by the company. So we'll write cash which is 8 lakhs minus 15,000 which has been paid in order to purchase 
the plant so the rest amount is seven lakh eighty five thousand plus there is no change in stock so it's fifty thousand and the next account is your plant which is also an asset and the amount is three lakh rupees now on the right hand side along with capital a new account will come that is credit which is also a liability and the amount is 850 plus 2 lakhs and 85,000 which both amounts to 11 lakh 35,000 so the equation remains intact that suggests that the adjustments which we have made during our second transaction is correct now we'll move to the third transaction third transaction is to deposit rupees 6 lakhs into bank now we'll understand the transactions in same manner as we have done previously so we'll consider the two accounts that are that are involved in this transaction first one is bank itself and the second one is cash cause the cash has been withdrawn and it has been deposited into bank so there would be change in the accounts on the left hand side only there would be no change on the right hand side of the equation so cash which was seven lakh eighty five thousand at the end of the second transaction and six lakh lakhs deducted from it which has been deposited into bank next one stock it remains same as 50,000 there would be no change in plans also so it remains same last one is bank account which is also an asset so rupees 6 lakhs added to the bank account which has been deducted from the cash account but the right hand side of the equation remains same you can also write this credit as creditor we can easily understand that the equation remains intact if 6 lakhs is deducted from one account on the same side and added to the next account on the same side so the equation remains intact now we will move to the fourth transaction first transaction states purchased office furniture of rupees 1 lakhs and the payment is done by check now there are two accounts that are involved in this transaction the one is furniture account and the next one is bank account as furniture has been purchased with 
the use of check so the amount would be paid by bank so the cash account remains the same as it was at the end of the third transaction stock remains the same which is 50,000 plant remains the same that is 3 lakhs there would be change in bank account that is 6 lakhs minus 1 lakh which would result in 5 lakhs plus furniture account which is also an asset that is 1 lakh again there would be no change on the right hand side cause 1 lakh has been deducted from the bank account and has been used to purchase furniture so the left hand side changes are balanced and there is no change on the right hand side of the equation now we'll analyze the next transaction so the next transaction is purchase goods worth 80,000 for cash and rupees 35,000 in credit so We'll write this transaction also. First one was cash. Which is an asset stock. An asset plant asset bank asset and furniture the liability side we have capital plus creditors Now the cash was at the end of the fourth transaction, one lakh eighty-five thousand. As it has been written that goods worth eighty thousand by purchase with the use of cash. So eighty thousand is deducted from cash. The rest amount is one lakh five thousand. and thirty five thousand was on credit so we'll increase the creditor section also so the capital remains the same And the liability which was one lakh two lakh eighty five thousand is 
increased by 35,000. as these are the these two are the amount paid for purchase of goods so that would be added to the stock so it amounts to 165000 the plant remains the same bank remains the same as at the end of for transaction and furniture will also be the same now we will analyze the six transaction and the total balance which I haven't written is eleven lakhs seventy thousand on both the side you can cross check it so we'll go for the next transaction the next transaction states goods amounting rupees forty five thousand was sold for rupees sixty thousand on cash basis now we can understand that there would be change in cash account and stock account but there would also be change in the capital account cause the profit part would be added to the capital part which has to be returned to the business owner as business entity concept states so the cash was at the end of fifth transaction as we can see it's one lakh five thousand sixty thousand has been raised from sale of goods so it amounts to one lakh sixty five thousand stock which was one lakh sixty five thousand decreases by forty five thousand so it amounts to one lakh twenty thousand plus the plant bank and furniture so the plant was 3 lakhs bank 5 lakhs and furniture 1 lakh now the capital part so the profit as I have told earlier the profit part would be added to the capital part as any benefit out of the business should be returned back to the owner as business and owner are different from each other so the capital part and the profit part they both need to be returned to the business owner so it calculates to 8 lakhs 65,000 plus the creditors which is 3 lakhs and 20,000 as I can add it 3 lakhs 20,000 now the seven transaction so I haven't totaled it yet so I'll sum it up that is 11 lakhs and 85,000 
on both the side. You can cross check it anytime you want. Okay. So we'll come to the seven transaction and the last three transactions uh, means you can also try it. So I'll leave up till the seven transaction and three transactions would be your homework. Uh, means uh, you can try it on and uh, you can find whether you have learned it or not. So we'll uh, do the seven transaction which would be the last transaction of this video. So according to the seven transaction It states that goods costing eighty thousand was sold for rupees sixty thousand on cash basis. So there would be decrease in stock and increase in cash and capital would be means uh, deducted because of there has been like decrease in there has been loss I guess uh, let me check uh, the slides once again okay goods costing 80,000 was sold for rupees 60,000 on cash basis Okay. So we'll deduct the stock by eighty thousand. So it amounts to forty thousand. We'll add 60,000 as cash which amounts to 2,25,000 the rest plant bank and furniture remains the same so I'll just write it down the capital plus creditor so here we have incurred a loss a loss of rupees 20,000 which needs to be deducted from the capital and the creditor remains the same there can also be a way like we can put over this 20,000 in debtors account and we can leave the capital as the same so if we do it in that manner we we will have the equation as cash plus stock plus plant bank furniture and debtors
this would be this would be 40,000 plan 3 lakhs bank 5 lakhs furniture 1 lakh and debtors 20,000 capital would remain same in that in this way if we incorporate debtors and creditor will also remain the same but we have to keep in mind that debtors would only be incorporated if it has been mentioned like rest of the amount has been means it has to be uh, collected later on and if it has been mentioned like the company has incurred a loss then we will the, we'll prefer the first uh, part of the means analysis of seven transaction so this is all we have for this video hope you have understood the concept how to analyze the transaction and uh, I hope that uh, you will use those concepts to solve the rest of the three uh, transactions which has been given in this question thank you for watching this video